What's become very clear to me that if we want to complete the work of pharmacare, the liberals are not going to do it. It's going to require electing more new Democrats. What? What? Dude. Um. Did he just? No. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Following up on our significant deep dive into this new Pharmacare deal, we exposed Jagmeet Singh's lies about an actual Pharmacare deal coming. What we didn't expect is that one day later, he would actually admit to it. Let's take a look. Good day. We know in Canada, one in four Canadians skips their pill, doesn't fill out a prescription because it's too expensive. So to be able to announce to Canadians that we are forcing the Liberal government to move forward to cover two classes of drugs with a single payer public program to cover contraceptives and diabetes is historic. We're proud of that. It's going to mean for a lot of people, for millions of Canadians, they're going to be able to save their money. They're going to be able to stay healthier. For people living with diabetes, this is a life-saving and very hopeful message to them. For them, many people are not taking the medication they need. They're not taking their insulin, they're not getting their blood tested, and it's costing them thousands of dollars out of pocket that they just can't afford. And so for those Canadians right now who are hearing this, we're gonna give you some hope. We're gonna cover diabetes medication across this country. It's gonna save people money, it's gonna keep them healthier, and it's gonna take some of the burden off of our healthcare system. Because we know what happens when people don't take the medication they need, they end up getting more and more sick, and they end up in the emergency room. So we're gonna save people. For people who need contraceptives, one of my, my dear friends who used to work at a women's clinic tells me that for the days that they would provide contraceptives, People would wait for hours and hours in line to get access to contraceptives. And that often they would run out of contraceptives before serving everyone in line. What? That's really surprising to me. I hope they had a doctor on staff handing those out because, I mean, everybody thinks of birth control pills as really benign and serving just one purpose. But if you're not careful, they could kill you. Uh, certain certain women shouldn't take them like women with certain medical conditions because you can throw a clot that will kill you and they're, they're not to be just like passed out like that this is going to mean for a lot of people real access to the right to choose not just a right but access to that right and we firmly believe in it and we're very proud that we can deliver contraceptive coverage across the country so i'm sorry like most provinces i, I would think are probably like ontario where everyone under 25, you get free contraceptives. I don't know if most of them are like Ontario. Um, I mean, you guys can let us know in the comments how, how your province runs things in regards to birth control. But, um, you know, from when I was a young woman, I don't recall it being that expensive. And that was when I was without a drug plan. Right. And, you know, a, a pack of condoms is not that expensive. Um, and <laughs> I don't know, there's, there's a lot of other, you know, options that are, you know, less than a pack of cigarettes. So uh, this is, this is where I'm, uh, and I don't think I'm alone in that Canadians aren't jumping up and down and begging for contraceptives. I think Jagmeet's voter base, again, young women under the age of 35 probably are. And for whatever reason, they think that the government should be providing that for them. Yeah, for some reason. Just on Pharmacare, um, Alberta and Quebec have indicated that they would like to opt out of a Pharmacare program. What is your reaction to that? I'm not surprised that conservative premiers that have cut investments in healthcare, who have hurt people by not investing in healthcare, don't want to help people that are struggling with the cost of diabetes. Not surprising to me. Those are the same premiers. If you look at the healthcare system in their provinces, they've made massive cuts that have hurt workers, that have hurt healthcare workers, and have hurt patients. We've seen horrible situations occur in both provinces because these are premiers that don't want to invest in taking care of people. So I'm not surprised that they don't want to invest in something like medication coverage that would save the lives of people. I'm not surprised by that. Have you been to Alberta, Jagmeet? Alberta is doing a lot of great things, especially in healthcare. There's people that are literally picking up and moving from Ontario in droves 
to Alberta because of the care and the strategy that they've taken. Just because you're cutting money doesn't mean the system's getting worse. And this is what is frustrating about these talking points. And they know darn well, both the Liberals and NDP, both of them know darn well that just because you're making a cut doesn't mean A, you're not reinvesting, or B, doesn't mean that you're actually cutting fat and unnecessary waste from that system. So I, I don't want to hear it, Jagmeet. And uh, as regards to Quebec, it has nothing to do with cuts. They already have their own stuff. They have their own programs. Why would they adopt another one? It doesn't make sense. But it's also important to note that uh, with our universal health care system, that provinces initially said no and eventually signed on, and we were able to show that this is better for everybody. Is, well, is there going to be an option for provinces to opt out? Uh, the plan is to work with provinces and negotiate with provinces to cover medication, to provide uh, a single payer public funding to make sure people can access their medication, whether it's for diabetes or contraceptions. That's the plan, and we'll work to make sure that that's what happens. It's going to require negotiating with provinces, working together, but the plan is to make sure someone who's right now worried that I can't afford my diabetes medication doesn't have to worry about that anymore. See, this is the whole thing that we were talking about yesterday. This deal isn't about a national pharmacare program. You can't call this a national pharmacare program when you're talking about essentially two types of drugs. Well, and you also can't call it a national pharmacare program when you're saying that provinces can opt out. Right. How and, is that national? Right. And, and you know, the question was put to him. So can provinces opt out? Well, we have to work with the provinces. Meaning? Yes, absolutely they can because <laughs> Alberta and Quebec are already planning on doing so. Yeah. Because they want nothing to do with something that's going to be this poorly managed. And you mentioned, you mentioned the fact that, oh, well, you know, initially when we brought in universal health care, you know, provinces were against it. Okay, so that was way back in 1947. They didn't just have a global pandemic. They were two years removed from a war. But you had all this extra money that, you know, you weren't given back because of the Canadian income tax. <laughs> yeah, remember that? That was supposed to stop. So, uh, you know... Uh, so the NDP was like, oh, what are we going to do with all this extra money? There's no war. Well, we might as well fund health care. And the fact that Jagmeet had said something to the effect of the provinces didn't want health care. And now look at everything. Everything's great. Everything's amazing. It's taken me three weeks just to get an appointment with my GP. It's taking a family member of mine over six months to see a specialist and then probably proceed to surgery. Like, this is terrible. Terrible. You think this is great health care? I bet he flies over to the States and gets his health care done, you know, in, in private. And that way he doesn't have to wait. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. Alberta says already that it is going to opt out of the program. So how are you going to make this work? So uh, that's kind of what happened when we talk about universal health care. At the time, the exact same thing happened. Uh, not every province wanted to sign on. Uh, provinces took time to actually agree to sign on. But what happened was provinces had universal health care in some places and people said, well, we're getting our coverage. And then people said, well, why aren't we getting our coverage? I think it'll be very difficult for the premier in Alberta to explain to people in Alberta who can't afford their diabetes medication why they're turning down an investment that would cover everyone in that province for their insulin and for their medical devices necessary for diabetes. I think that's going to be something that the premier in Alberta will have to explain to their citizens why they're refusing to take action that would save lives, save money for those people, and improve our healthcare outcomes. Now, I don't want to speak for the province of Alberta because I obviously don't live there, um, but just kind of from what I've heard, it seems most people in Alberta are not fans of government intervention, whether that's for something like pharmacare or something else, like the government telling you what websites you are and aren't allowed to go to. So... I'm guessing that probably not as many people as Jagmeet thinks are going to be upset about Alberta opting out of Pharmacare. Well, and again, he, he keeps making this false equivalency. When they, when they rolled out universal health care, it was everything, right? It's broken legs, it's surgery, uh, it's testing, it's extra, it's, it's everything. This is not everything. It's literally two types of things in a 
in a possibility and, and diagnosis of hundreds of thousands of conditions. Well, and it's not even all diabetes medications. As they had said, they won't be covering Ozempic, which I know a lot of people have started to use it for weight loss, but there are people who legitimately use it for diabetes and it works for them. So what are you supposed to say to them? Too bad? So sad? You're out of luck? The other difference between universal health care and pharmacare is the government is intending to basically say, we are going to cover insulin medication, but only this one, just like Fox said. Now ex expand that to potentially many, many, many other types of medication, right? From, uh, from medications that deal with uh, psychiatric disorders uh, to deal with, you know, uh, thyroid conditions and the list goes on. And what if they say, well, we're only going to cover this, this specific manufacturer. Um, that's still good. Like, where does that put people? Because, hello, there's side effects and there's a myriad of other reasons that people are using the specific brand that they are. Well, and I guess you're just SOL if you're one of those people using that brand of medication. I don't really think you can call it universal when, again, it's not everything. Now, I suppose you can make the argument for healthcare that, well, it doesn't cover cosmetic surgeries except in very rare circumstances. Like, let's say um, you get in a car accident and need, uh, like, r repair, um, but it doesn't cover if you wanted to go into the plastic surgeon and get liposuction, you know what I mean? So I suppose you could say it that way, but I don't know, two medications, that's not universal. Where do legislation include timelines for other types of drugs? You've singled out only two types of drugs. So uh, what's become very clear to me is that we have to fight very hard for these two classes of drugs and for the legislation that if we want to complete the work of pharmacare, the liberals are not going to do it. It's going to require electing more new Democrats. What? Wait w a minute. WTF was that? Wait a minute. And I don't mean where's the funds. Where's the pharmacare? What? What? Dude. Um. Did he just? No. You just admitted that pharmacare isn't coming. That's, that's literally what you just admitted. But not only that, he hinted that an election is needed in order to get this done. Yeah. So, dude, you, you promised. It's in the supply and confidence agreement. And you promised all of your voters at your convention in October last year. Don Davies stood up. Oh, it's a red line or, or, or it's nothing. Now, we have been crystal clear. We have put on the record that nothing less than public pharmacare delivered through our single payer system will do for us. Nothing less. It was supposed to be passed, not started, passed by the end of last year. And then what was it, Sunday he went on with Vashi and said that uh, they're going to be supporting the Liberals. They're so happy with this deal and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But even though it's not universal, it's not what they voted for. This is what he said on, on, on Sunday. This is a historic first. This is this is a big step forward for universal single payer pharmacare. A big step forward. This uh, is historic. There's nothing historic about this. You just said that in order to actually get this in, there needs to be an election. So, OK, let's back up. Two years ago, more than two years ago, they admitted that universal pharmacare would never work all in one shot, that it needed to be implemented gradually, step by step. Right. That was in the CTV article that we discussed on our live stream, which the link will be in the description. But for the last, let's say, two years since they signed that deal with the liberals, they've been saying we want universal single payer pharmacare all in one shot. And we won't settle for anything, anything less. And then this weekend, they announced that they've reached this deal with the liberals saying that these two medications is a historic first step. So basically what happened is the liberals behind closed doors, they sat the NDP down and said, we're, we're, we're never going to be able to do this all in one shot. But um, the NDP knew that. So this is what we'll do. 
we will pass some legislation to kind of get the basics, uh, you know, the basic framework in place for, let's say, let's say a couple of, a couple of different drugs. And uh, then we then we can roll that out across the country, call that National Pharmacare and we can we can, you know, we, we can get a victory in, in getting these two drugs, you know, funded as soon as the legislation's done. Oh, OK, that, that's good. So th- that was that was second prize. So, you know, Jagmeet, he completely betrayed all of his voters. Every single person at that convention that voted on that resolution, Pharmacare or bust, Jagmeet has betrayed every single one of them. And this isn't just a conservative-leaning podcast talking about this. This is facts, folks. This is an actual fact. Jagmeet promised universal national pharmacare for all. You've heard him. He even said it at the beginning of this interview. Which in and of itself wasn't a lie because prior to that, he was saying that they knew. They knew they could not implement it all at once like this. Right. But that's what he asked for the liberals anyways. So this is this is insane, folks, that he actually just admitted it. We are the only ones committed to a public health care system that's well funded. We're the only ones committed to a universal pharmacare that covers everybody and covers all drugs. So if people want that to happen, the only party that is committed to that, the only leader that's committed to that is me and the New Democratic Party. You have the confidence in supply agreement now. What's left to do? And do you think this deal will go all the way to June next year? So now we've got to make sure that the things that we fought for are actually implemented. We've got to make sure that Pharmacare goes through. So we've got the promise, we've got the commitment. Now we've got to see the legislation table this week, and then we're going to watch very carefully to see the rollout. We also have to make sure that the dental care rollout happens. This is something we fought for. People are getting enrolled in the program. We're already hearing about some concerns and some problems being raised. We want to make sure those are fixed. So there's lots of work that remains to be done. But ultimately, what we've said and we maintain is that our job is to make auto work for people. As long as we can force this government to deliver for people, as long as we can continue to make sure life is better and that we're using our power to make life better for people, we're gonna continue to do that. Unlike the conservatives, whose only offer is to cut, cut healthcare, cut pensions, cut investments in employment insurance, cut the things that people need, we're offering to make life better with real solutions. You know what the first thing they're gonna cut is? Jag meets pension. Taxes. Oh. Well, then Jagmeet's pension is second. Then Jagmeet's <laughs> pension is second. Seriously, like, that, that's what you have to say. Dude, you, th- you think money grows on trees and you can just borrow until the end of time. But do you see how he didn't answer that question? He didn't say, yes, we're going to continue voting with the liberals or no, we're going to not vote with them. We're going to vote how we feel like. He completely ignored that. Well, and, you know, he said, well, you know, we're, we're making Ottawa work for people. And as long as we can, you know, force the government, you haven't forced them to do it, like anything. Are you kidding me? The, the liberals are, are basically delaying the dental care rollout. And you're like, oh, well, uh, you know, there are some concerns that you are such a fraud. Well, and we've got a budget coming in a few weeks, a budget vote in probably five or six weeks. So... I wonder if this pharmacare is going to be included in that budget. I wonder if this is the budget that they're going to vote against. Well, here's the thing. He has he has put himself in such a corner. He has bumbled this so badly. I think what was happened is he got lots of promises and, you know, didn't actually see anything over the weekend. And now he's starting to hear, oh, crap, there's no timeline. Oh, that's not good. And then he went online and <laughs> you, you want to hear bad news? I think uh, as, as Fox and I were talking about this off off camera, that Jagmeet was expecting to come out to, you know, the, a, uh, the CTV news interview. And then he was going to be lauded by people across the country. And what was he met with? Disdain and vitriol from his own voters. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I went to a bunch of typically left leaning subreddits, and people were pissed. This isn't what I wanted. I'm a guy, I don't even use birth control. I don't need diabetes medication. I needed universal pharmacare for my ADHD meds, my depression medication, my anti anxiety pills, my blood pressure pills, etc., etc. Not for this stuff. And people were pissed. Never mind the fact that nobody 
thinks that pharmacare is a priority right now. The big priority is housing and health care. And immigration. Like, those are the top three. And crime. Let's not forget the crime. Pharmacare is nowhere, nowhere in the top 10 of what's on Canadians' minds right now. And the fact that this is what you're, you're putting the hill to die on for the NDP on, good luck, buddy. So you better wise up real quick that your voters are not happy with you. The rest of Canada is not happy with you. And I bet you're going to be looking at the polling numbers really closely over the next couple of weeks because I think you're going to need to do an about face and uh, you need to be making some other decisions which involve voting non-confidence, buddy, because this pharmacare deal, if you stick with it, it is going to put your party in the ground. 